Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday. We are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer. Stocks are lower. Jim, as you're right, in real money, uh, North Korea causing this sort of bizarre safe haven pile on. Yeah, I mean, people want to own the yen, uh, but it's obvious that we have to worry about what happens if North Korea tests a missile mm. and it doesn't go over Japan. It stops in Japan. So I question the yen's reserve currency status here. The dollar is weaker across the board. I have been an unrelenting bull on the euro, even though many people have told me not to be. And uh, I continue to think that the euro can go higher. I'm using a 135 target. And that's in part because Europe is stronger than us, in part because they can't keep rates down any longer. Notice our rates, now that's a flight to safety, but our rates are once again weighing on the bank stocks. Uh, we own, we've trimmed a lot of our bank stocks and sold our Wells Fargo. We still have Citi and Key for action mm. alerts. We're up nicely on Citi. I'm tempted to pick at some Key at below 17. Hmm. All right, now I know I'm jumping the gun here, but Jim, I mean, people are worried. So how do you prepare your portfolio for war with North Korea? You really can't. Um, obviously, uh, David Williams talked about gold. Yes. Uh, gold is, is a, the true reserve currency in this situation. Uh, Rand Gold is the uh, best stock if you want gold. I think that the GLD, obviously, but to me, this is a case to own bullion. Hmm. Um, and remember, bullion has to be stored at a bank. Uh, I think multiple banks is the way I would store it. That's just that's not a new position for me. Uh, remember, uh, in 1933, the U.S. government confiscated your gold. So uh, people have always told me to keep some of your gold outside the country. Hmm. All right, it's good advice. Jim, let's move back here to the U.S. We have Hurricane Harvey still in focus. What do you make of some of the oil movements we're seeing? Well, uh, let's talk about Hurricane. First of all, you know, the, it's an ongoing tragedy. Uh, uh, we uh, don't know when it's going to end, frankly. Um, I think that yesterday I used a worst case of $100 billion. I think that could play out. Hmm. Um, but what, ha what people have to recognize is that the, a lot of the damage is going to homes. Hmm. And you cannot, no one has flood insurance to speak of, which is one of the reasons why the property casualty stocks have now turned up. They can raise rates, but they are not going to get hurt. Uh, my reinsurance information says that there is uh, right now still all single digits. Uh, for the insurers, so those who, uh, that's one of the reasons why they're, they've done going down. My reinsurance information is as, as of about an hour ago. Uh, I would point out that the rebuild is going to be substantial. The move in United Rentals, URI, I think is a correct one, as I, I talked about last night on Mad Money. Uh, but the federal government is the one that's going to have to step in. So we wanted to see what the president says. Uh, don't forget, this does set back, I think, the agenda again for tax reform is because this uh, flooding is going to continue and be a major story going into September, uh, and there are only 12 days of work in September. So uh, I don't think the agenda of tax reform is going to have any chance to happen uh, unless something uh, rabbit out of the hat, uh, extended uh, non-vacation in December. But otherwise, it, it's this does complicate things. Yeah, and, and in terms of West Texas Intermediate at 47, how do you grapple with that with well, this Well, I, I just question uh, how that is uh, going to stay there. Now, the things we do know, there's amount of oil in storage that will, that will last a month, probably. Mm. So we do not have any shortage of oil, which typically we would have at this point. You know, just to distinguish between the country now versus then, versus, say, five, eight years ago, uh, where we would be worried about oil, uh, there is an excess of oil. Uh, now, that does hurt the producers. I think any move in the producers up, uh, as we've been telling people for Action Alerts, is not sustainable. Uh, I do think that the West Texas price is not the price that they can get in the Permian. Be aware of that and uh, judge accordingly. And we'll look forward to your bulletins on ActionAlertsPlus.com. Jim, let's also talk about some retail news. We had Best Buy reporting better than expected comps. What did you think? Well, uh, remember what matters is the forecast on the conference call. They were uh, not downbeat, but they did say, listen, there's going to be a lot of promotion. Mm. Uh, once again, you should not necessarily read the 5% comp, which was fantastic. As the new normal, they're talking about maybe half of that. Um, that's why that stock went from peak to trough eight bucks. I think they're being conservative, but it, they did talk about a competitive environment. Competitive and promotional are the two words that have yeah. hurt so many different companies. Uh, by the way, that's also the term that Foot Locker used and yes. Finish Line had to use too. Uh, yes, I wanted to talk about Finish Line, but one more question on Best Buy. How do you, uh, what do you think of Geek Squad? Because we know Amazon wanted to get into that space. Well, Geek Squad's good. It's the reason why the company's been able to 
uh, do well here. Uh, and so I, I recognize that that is uh, a defining uh, uh, team because the devices are more and more complicated. They mentioned that the uh, home systems that we all hear about uh, did well. Well, those need Geek Squad to put in, so I think that's important. And by the way, just again, to speak about this day, I mean, don't take your read from Best Buy, and don't necessarily take your read from Lockheed Martin. Take your read from some of the larger internationals, which are huge beneficiaries of this weaker dollar. Um, I'm following J&J &J and 3M as tells of what you should be buying here, uh, because those are companies that do quite well with international overseas business. Okay, and Jim, you mentioned finish line earlier. What did you make of the quarter? This was not a surprise. No, it was a bad quarter. Um, and I think that, as I mentioned, that Nike is a company that is 71% of finish line is Nike, and Nike does not have uh, a refresh that is interesting to people. And I think a lot of the concern here, has the Jordan line finally mm. run out? And I think that's certainly a reasonable question to ask. Yes, you brought that up on Squawk in the Street. Jim, on your Mad Dash segment, you talked about Hanes Celestial still holding its own a minute. Yeah, Amazon I mean, Hulk. now I think that Hain delivered. Remember, Hain had a SEC issue. That's now behind them. They had a decent quarter. Uh, they do have a British operation that made it so in constant currency. Uh, if you reverse that because the pound's so weak, you saw it was a very good quarter. Now, what people are going to say is, where do they fit in with Whole Foods? They've always had a good relationship with Whole Foods. Who knows? All, a lot of people feel that every food company is going to be uh, pressed by Whole Foods for bargains now that they're owned by Amazon. We don't know how that's going to play out. Uh, Hain does not have a yield. Uh, the, the food companies that do not have yields have been much harder hit than the ones that do. When I say uh, not have yield, let, let's can say Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola hangs in there. Why does Coca-Cola hang in there? Because it's got very good yield. I like Coca-Cola here. Yeah, and it's just amazing to see those echoes in, in Whole Foods now, <laughs> those Amazon echoes. Yes, yes, it's that's uh, Amazon is uh, land over. and expand. <laughs> All right, Jim, one thing we're watching for tomorrow, CNBC has an interview with Warren Buffett. What do you expect? Okay, Warren Buffett is probably going to reiterate how much he likes Apple. Uh, remember, he thinks it's a consumer products good story that is very, very good. I think that uh, he will also talk about uh, how you can't look at your portfolio on a static basis. I'm sure he will talk about how Houston will be rebuilt. That is, again, a federal government issue because of flooding. Uh, and I think he will quite, uh, paint quite an optimistic picture of saying it really doesn't matter who's president. And that's going to be a continuing theme for as long as he runs Brooks All right, we'll look forward to that interview. Jim Kramer, thank you so much as always. And for more information on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.